Welcome to the Travel and Living Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Baker. This is your weekly podcast series that discusses everything related to living and working and traveling to Costa Rica. I'm a British expat that has been living here in Costa Rica since 2006, so know a thing or two about this region of Central America. Today's guest is Jess Licky. She is a senior travel consultant at Costa Rican Vacations, and she offers us a fascinating insight into the perspective of the travel sector here in Costa Rica from the point of view of working in some of the best high-end hotels, but also now at one of the top uh, travel agencies here in Costa Rica. I chat to Jess about what brought her down here initially in 2015, uh, to the fact that she's now building her home with a partner in the more rural region towards the Arenal volcano. And in this episode, we chat everything travel, everything that you need to know about the key aspects of coming on a vacation to Costa Rica, where you should go, when you should come, and of course, the top tours as well. So without further ado, let's jump in and get chatting. <laughs> Morning, Jess. Great to have you on the podcast. How are you doing? Buenos días, Adam. Todo bien. All good here. Good stuff. Todo bien. Pura vida. <laughs> it looks nice and sunny where you are. Whereabouts do we find you in Costa Rica? Yeah, so I'm about 45 minutes outside of La Fortuna in a town called Ciudad Quesada. Nice. On the way That's to the, where I live. On the way to the famous Arenal volcano. Yeah, exactly. I actually lived there for about oh, four or five years. And then about two years ago, I moved just right outside here in Ciudad Quesada. So awesome. yeah, it's a sunny day. It's kind of weird though. It's like a little bit overcast, but it's super sunny um, and it's nice and warm. So, you know, we get all kinds of weather here, especially close to the volcano. So I'm looking forward to asking you about that because obviously today we're going to focus on travel, everything that is related um, to the traveling aspect of coming down on vacation. What tips should you know about when's the best time of year to come? Which hotels, which tours should you visit? Obviously, being from Arenal, being close to the Arenal area, you know about some of the best tours in the country. Um, and the weather, yeah, like you say, it's July right now. Um, so, you know, it does get a bit crazy depending on where you are. Uh, and sometimes it's really sunny. So it's good to kind of um, disperse some of those uh, myths as well. But before we get uh, going, Jess, it'd be great to hear how did it all begin for you? What brought you down here to Costa Rica initially? Yeah, good question. So I always kind of knew that I wanted to speak Spanish and my parents, I'm not, my blood is very German, um, but my parents always wanted me to learn a second language. But when I went to kindergarten, they didn't have German. So they put me in Spanish. And so I've been taking Spanish classes since I was in kindergarten. And then I went to, you know, high school and I ended up studying in college as well. And I always wanted to do like a study abroad. So I actually did a semester abroad in Spain while I was getting my undergraduate. And then when I was getting my master's, um, I saw that I could do an internship internationally because I was getting my master's in international business. And so I'd reached out to one of my professors from Spain who come to find out is Costa Rican. And he's like, yeah, actually, I, I know someone in Costa Rica that might, you know, might want an MBA intern. I'll connect you. And like two days later, I had an internship here in Costa Rica at La Paz Waterfall Gardens at Peace Lodge. Uh -huh. So I came down here, I think it was 2014 or 2015 for the first time. And I did a three month internship and I lived down in, in Edelia and I would take the bus up every morning and take the bus down every night. Um, and I just loved it. And then after my internship, I my mom came down and we traveled the country together for about two weeks. And it was so interesting. We, we get to the airport and she was leaving a day before me. I don't remember why. And she goes, you know, I just feel like we're not quite done with Costa Rica. And I was like, right. I feel the same way. And fast forward like eight or nine months, uh, the owner of the Hotel Peace Lodge and their sister property, The Springs, emailed me out of nowhere. And he's like, hey, I think you liked your experience here. Like, would you want to come down full time? Like, we we really need some help. And at the time, I actually had been looking to kind of switch switch up my job a little bit and, and career path. And I was like, whoa, well, that would be something super different, right? I'm from Wisconsin originally, so uh -huh. six, six months of the year, snow. Yeah, for sure. And I said, yeah, why not? Uh, so I came down and I lived at Peace Lodge for about nine months and, and I came down like in a finance accounting role and then moved over to the Springs for, you know, three, four years after that. So that's uh -huh. kind of how I came down here. Super crazy and, you know, fate 
as fate will have it. So that's kind of how I got down here and, um, you know, COVID hit and, um, wasn't quite sure what the industry was going to look like, or if I had to move back to the States or if I was going to have a job. And at that time I'd been speaking with one of the managers here at Costa Rica vacations because I had, um, you know, always worked with CRV, but from a hotel's perspective for, you know, five years or so. And I thought, well, that sounds kind of fun. And so middle of the pandemic, CRV took a chance on me and I made the move. And so I've been with Costa Rica Vacations as a travel consultant for the last, it'll be three years in October. Time flies, right? That's a crazy yeah. story. So when you when you say you were switching your career roles, what were you studying originally before you moved into tourism down here? Nothing nearly as fun as tourism. So uh. I... Um, I got my undergraduate in accounting and I was working in corporate accounting, um, international tax to be specific. And then I was looking, I actually had a job offer with Ernst and Young. And so I was going to move to their Chicago office, um, do more of like a domestic sales tax position. So all accounting, accounting, finance. Um, and then that's when I came down here to Costa Rica was to yeah. do more of like a cost accounting role, but still on the finance side. And so my job here at the hotels was, hey, how do we reduce our cost or what are our costs? Yeah, the sure. systems weren't super accurate and um, they didn't necessarily have great systems to, you know, track inventory and all of those, yeah. you know, finance accounting cost control type of, of processes. So my life is very different now <laughs> compared to what I used to do for yeah. a quote unquote career. So um, yeah, lots of change. That's fantastic. Are you are you typically the kind of person that says yes? to those kind of big questions, like, hey, do you want to stay in Costa Rica and make it permanent? I mean, you, saying yes tends to open many doors, but is that a is that a common trait of yourself, do you find? I think so. Um, and I think for me, it's always like, what's my other option to stay here and continue to work in something that I kind of already know? Or while I'm not married with no kids and I had just paid off my my college debt. And so uh-huh. I was like, I have no debt. I didn't, yeah. I was actually looking for a home at the time to purchase. I'm like, I didn't really have anything tying me down. Like, what's the worst that could happen? It's kind of my my mentality, right? Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? I don't like it or it's not what I was hoping yeah. for. And I move back. You go back. Exactly. You know, I didn't speak a hundred percent Spanish. I probably spoke because studying is so much different than, you know, yeah. immersion, right? And so I was like, well, you know, I probably speak 60%, but if, you know, I really just can't live there, you know, because Peace Lodge is kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so yeah. it's a lot of, there's not a ton of English speaking people in the community. And um, I said, what's the worst that could happen? You know, I don't love it. And I come home Yeah, and no, then I sure. can get another job or, you know, whatever it might be. So I do like to say yes, but my, my internal thoughts are always like, What's the worst that could happen? I mean, know? that's a that's a great way to out uh, to have you know an outlook on life. I actually I can relate. I had something similar when I came down. It was a post university gap year, and the question was after being in the country for three months, what am I going back to? You know, do we get on that flight? Me and my sister at the time, and we just decided not to, but had to then get a job and obviously start making a living. You know, and it's that kind of mentality that I think can get you into these amazing places. It's uh, it's fascinating when you look back on. Um, You're in a really interesting position, which I haven't spoken to many people of, working in the tourism industry, that you have been in the high-end luxury. You're talking about, uh, you know, working at the Peace Lodge and Waterfall Gardens, which is about an hour north of the San Jose in the capital in the mountains, um, and its sister property, the Springs Resort. So you've worked in two of the nicest, most popular hotels in the country, and then moved over to the agency with Costa Rican Vacations as a travel consultant. What did you find most interesting, fascinating, and different about seeing the tourism sector from two different uh, angles? Yeah, well, I think first and foremost, every day, and I'm sure you can relate, Adam, but every day I wake up and I just feel this gratitude for my experiences here in Costa Rica. I mean, I, I came here, which I would call like super randomly, right? Like the owner emailed me like, hey, can you come down? I didn't apply, right? And then from there, so I came to Costa Rica with a job offer from, like you said, some of the most amazing, most beautiful places in Costa Rica. And I'm working for the the top agency in the country, right? And so just this like level of gratitude of waking up every day. I mean, even when I was at the Springs, I mean, it was a lot of work, but I would wake up and I'd have that beautiful picturesque view of the volcano. 
And now I, I wake yeah. up here. And for example, this morning, I'm, I'm building a house now here in Ciudad Quesada. And I had to go run some materials to the, um, you know, to the maestro de obra or like the, the, the builder. Uh -huh. And I can do that, right? Like I'm not chained to a desk eight to five or, yeah. you know, and so I, I, first and foremost, like I, you know, especially when you study accounting, you think like, okay, I'm, this job is secure and I have to, you know, sit at a desk um, the rest of my life because it's a good job. And it's kind of what the career track says that you have to do. And so the fact that I've been able to completely step away from that, I mean, even when I was at the Springs and Peace Lodge, I would do travel shows in, you know, Morocco and Brazil. And I, you know, I got to travel the world that way as well. Um, but I think, you know, going back to your question, some of the, the differences or maybe, you know, what's it like working at, you know, one of the, the larger hotels and then the agency, I'd actually say they're, they're quite similar um, because it's, you know, meeting people and from all over the world and yeah. creating experiences, whether, you know, that be in the mountain or the rainforest um, or here now that, you know, I'm at CRV and I get to, you know, work with the entire country. I think it's, um, I feel so cliche saying that it's just a really cool experience to be able yeah. to share this entire country with, you know, with travelers. But I'd say that the experiences are actually quite similar, even though I was in a totally different position uh, with the hotels, but still I lived on the property. So I got to meet so many people from all over the world and I'm any, actually still Facebook friends with a lot of them. That's fantastic. Do you have any amazing experiences or stories you can share with us from your time working in either property? Something that really sticks out. Yeah, I'd say that the biggest one was shooting The Bachelor. Um, right, at the Springs Resort. Yeah, so what year? It was the year before the pandemic, so 2018, um, October? I, remember, I, I, I was a travel was. consultant. I remember it airing, and I remember the amount of inquiries we got after that was on. It was bonkers. I mean, they and we only shot one episode. And right. they came for 13 days and we had, you know, we did the the scouting with them previously. We had to have an overflow hotel because they had a, you know, a local, because they, they, they run 24 yeah. seven. So while, you know, they shoot for a few hours, but then they have someone editing and yeah. cutting and, you know, and they're, they have like, they bring in their own design team and it's crazy. I mean, and it's all just for one episode. Granted, the episode was, was a two hour episode. Yeah. But it was absolutely crazy. But I met, again, just meeting really cool people and um, seeing, I mean, like a completely different industry, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so seeing kind of how they run and, and the producers, you know, what they were looking for. And um, so I think The Bachelor is probably the coolest thing that I got to experience yeah. while living there. I was at Peace Lodge when the, when the Kardashians came. Um, that must have you know, been it's kind of silly, right? Yeah. I I actually don't watch either one of the shows, but yes. it's really cool to to yeah, see that different industry. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, fascinating insight, and especially the experience because of how that's going to portray Costa Rica on both of those uh, both of those uh, kind of trips for those guys. Um, yeah, absolutely fascinating. I, I I've always loved to ask you know what do you love about Costa Rica? Is there anything culturally? that made you stay other than the great jobs and the experiences? What do you love about living here generally? Yeah, I think two things kind of stick out right away. One is the weather. Um, and two, I would say the people. So when it comes to weather, you can go, for example, to Dota, San Gerardo de Dota, and it's completely different yeah. weather pattern and climate. It's a little bit chilly. And so like the, the cute little hotels that have the fireplaces are, are really cute. Or you can go to Guanacaste, right? Where it's super warm, you get sun yeah. most of the year, um, the snorkeling's great. And so from coming from somewhere where it's like, we have, you know, in Wisconsin, we had two months of summer, what felt like two or three months of summer. We had a little bit of fall, but then winter, you know, we had snow six months of the year and the States is just so big. So to yeah. get to another, for example, California or Florida, one of those nicer, hours, it's, yeah. you have to fly. Yeah. Um, and so here it's like, for me, especially where I live, I can get to so many different climates in three, four hours, or I can even get all the way down to, you know, Uvita in, you know, five or six. So that I love. Because we, I mean, we, we travel a lot in this job, right? Because we yeah. experience all the different hotels and experiences and tours that, you know, we offer to our travelers. Yeah. Um, 
but it's always different, right? Um, and then the other thing would be the culture. I've been super fortunate. My partner is Tico, so he's Costa Rican and um, his family has like a local finca. And so, you know, I get to experience that um, non-touristy part of Costa Rica. And yeah. I would say that we live in a very non-touristy area. I'm probably one of five expats that live in the area. Um, but that's really, really cool because I do feel like I get to live the Costa Rican experience and just the simplicity of things here. Um, but the hospitality of the Ticos in general is second to none. And I say that as someone who's from the Midwest who traditionally has great hospitality, yeah, but yeah. the people here will give you the shirts off your back. I'm sure as yeah. you've probably experienced as well, but the people here are just so great. And it's funny because I'll even sometimes grab dinner with some travelers of mine who are in Fortuna and we get so many requests of like all inclusive, all inclusive, all inclusive. We want to go to the West End for a week. And it's like, just take a chance on me. I promise it's worth it. And I had, in fact, I just went to dinner with someone about two months ago as big family. They just wanted to do a week at the West End and we we met up for uh, dinner in Fortuna and they went to Arnold Springs first here yep. in Fortuna and then they went to the West End and they sent me an email afterwards and they're like, you are so right. Like the people are just different. They're uh, they have more like family values and, you know, their kids were tired the day that they came from the airport and like the hotel staff, like brought couches to, to the side of the table so the kids could relax. And so it's just a completely different level of hospitality, but that's, and it's not just because they're catering to tourists, right? Yeah. Like that's just how that's they are. It. Yeah. It comes from a natural place. It's so true. And it's really nice to hear that you've got that super interesting balance of living a more, I guess, cultured Costa Rican culture life. The Finca sounds lovely, the more remote area, whilst having this big tourism connection as well, um, and also having that switch between seeing your clients and being able to visit them constantly, which is always wonderful, uh, and having that family life as well. So it must be really, that's a lovely, lovely balance, I can imagine. Um, and I didn't know you were building your house. That's super interesting. You know, one of the previous podcasts, I was chatting to one of our colleagues, Mark, who's a uh, who was talking about building his house in Escazú. So I must get you back on future podcasts to ask you how that experience is going, as we have a lot of viewers and listeners who are super interested about living and moving down to Costa Rica. And I know the process of building a property has its challenges, and it's really interesting to get everybody's perspective. So for sure, I'll be uh, reaching out to you down the line. Yeah, and um, my my partner, Harold Gamboa, is actually a photographer, and so we've been documenting the whole process as well. Oh, amazing. Um, and when I first came to Costa Rica and at the Springs, they they have their own shops, their own construction team. Every, they do everything there. Yeah. And I just remember seeing the whole process and then building new buildings and villas. Um, and I was like, I'm never going to build anything here in Costa Rica. Okay. And two years later, here I am building something. But no, it's it definitely has its own challenges. And I think right now we're just kind of in the whole process of like in, internally, we're like, this is super stressful and a lot of work. But I'm like, nope, self-talk. This is so cool that we get to do this. Um, and so I think it's also like a, it's a very mental game too. Um, but it's beautiful. You know, we we have a great view. We can see the Arnold volcano from our lot. And yeah. um, so we're we're super excited about so that. Currently you're enjoying the process. It comes like a roller coaster with its ups and downs, but generally still wonderful. Yes. And we have a phenomenal builder, which I would say is like the number one rule <laughs> as far as building here is someone you trust and is helpful. Um, so yeah, we can definitely talk about that in another chat because there is tons to chat about. Yes. Yeah. How long is the build and how far into it are you? Yeah. So my mom retired two years ago, I think. And so she has all, I mean, I think I told you earlier, she's always loved Costa Rica. Yeah. Um, and she, now we we actually have a house in, in Coco as well. Her and I are just a condo because she wants to be on the beach. Yeah. And so she comes from like January through May or June. And so we're gonna start building like a guest house because I have four brothers and uh -huh. you know, my my parents like to come visit. So we're gonna start with a guest house, which is just one one room and then an open like cocina sala, kitchen, living room area, yeah. and patio. So we're going to start with like a guest house, learn about the process and <laughs> what building looks like and make mistakes, I'm sure. Um, and then we'll build a, you know, a, a separate house. We have about two acres of land. So we'll build, you know, the, the principal house later on. Wonderful. So um, right now it's set for about four months. So okay. we're only like three or four weeks in. So maybe I'll give you a call in a couple of months as we approach Christmas and see how you're doing. That'd be very interesting. Yeah. 
November November fifteenth is the date. So okay. TBD. Well, I'll hold you to it. Well, let's let's get to stuck into some of the biggest topics. I wanted to ask you in one of the first times on this podcast. What are your key travel tips for visiting Costa Rica? It's a huge question. Where would you start? Super big question. Um, I would say like Costa Rica is a big, small country. There is so much to do. And I so oftentimes uh, I get, you know, referral travelers or people even that inquire directly to us at CRV. They're like, we want to do, here are the 10 things we want to do. And they're spread out all over the whole country. And so it's like, okay, well, unless you're able to come for a month, yeah, because it's a, it's a, it's a small country, but you know, the roads are winding. It takes a while to get from one, one place to the next. So I would say, um, you know, Costa Rica is one of those destinations where you can come back several times and always have a different experience. Unlike, you know, some other countries you go once and you're like, I feel like I saw it all. Um, and so, especially when people are coming for a shorter amount of time, I'd say like, be, be flexible and say, and it's okay to save something for later. Yeah. Um, but as far as travel tips go, you know, what are some of the top things you want to do? Um, is always a, a, a question I get or a question I ask, I should say. Um, because if someone wants to be super adventurous, you know, we're looking more at r If someone wants to see a bunch of wildlife and national parks, we're looking more into the central and southern Pacific. If they want super off the beaten path. Um, so I think kind of having an idea of what you want your Costa Rica, or at least your first experience to look like is super yeah. important. And then, you know, us as the, the local experts are able to help you and kind of guide you in the right locations. And then, of course, you know, later on, there are more tips on what to pack and what to bring, what yeah. time of the year. Um, but I'd say, like, being flexible with where you're going to go is always a nice thing to keep in mind because there's so much to see. Yeah. It's and like, I it's think like, if you have the night. Mm -hmm. It's like being open minded, like you say, because I, I imagine, like you just mentioned, you spoke to your clients a couple of months ago. Do you speak to a lot of clients that have the idea of going to Hawaii or Jamaica or Mexico, all inclusive on the beach, Costa Rica's lovely beaches? You you always encounter that question, right? And then what, what is your best answer for not just doing that? I always ask, you know, what is it that you want to experience? And people will oftentimes blame something that's not what they say they're looking for. So they'll say we want a lot of adventures and waterfalls and wildlife. Um, we want to be in a local town. None of those are at all inclusive. Right. Exactly. But they think because they're used to traveling to Mexico or the Dominican, yeah. they're used to the all inclusive and that's what they know. Right. And so it's our job to, you know, kind of educate and say, Hey, we can do an all inclusive, but just so you know, the all inclusive is going to be a little bit more secluded. Yeah. Um, you know, they're really not near a local town. There's not a ton of wildlife because they're all located in the dry forest. And so I think it's just like having that conversation, which is why phone calls are so nice, or even what you and I are doing. I, I hop on zoom calls with my travelers, um, right. and just getting an idea of, of what it is, because it's really hard when you only know one, one thing or one way of traveling to open your mind to this other way. Yeah. Um, and I also get the question is like, is it safe? right? I go to all inclusives because they're safe and I don't ever have to leave. And I live here as a single female, right? Yeah. I mean, I have a boyfriend, but I, I didn't for the first five years I lived here. And so it's safe to, yeah. to explore other parts of the country. And so that's really important too. Yeah. It's a great question. It comes up a lot. I mean, is Costa Rica safe? You know, a lot of people like to ask the question and like you say, I mean, yes, it is. And you're in a better position even than I, you know, I've been here for uh, 18 years or so, but obviously as even from a, you know, a guy's perspective, you know, once you get out in around the country, you you see such lovely hospitality. People are very warm and welcoming. And yes, you have the the pickpocketing and the stuff in San Jose and the metropolitan areas, all the usual stuff like you do anywhere, right? Traveling, as long as you travel savvy. And I think it's a really good point that people always take those previous experiences, especially coming from the US when you have the popular destinations. Oh, Hawaii is close to home, obviously, but Mexico and the Dominican Republic, as you mentioned. So, yeah, you it's always good, I think, as you say, it's flexibility and have an open mind to ask questions, ask more questions. Make sure you 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 kind of get all this information that you guys have as local experts to kind of pass that off. Really, really valid. Well, what this country is changing all the time. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, f I find so many times people will read like older blog posts, which are great sources of information. Yeah, yeah. But things change here 
you know, even since I came here, and I'm sure since you've come here, I mean, this country is a completely different country than it was, you know, seven years ago or 18 years ago. Yeah. And so making, you know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, definitely sets us apart is that we we are here. We we live here. You know, we've we've been to these hotels, we we drive on these roads. And so um I think that's really important too. It, it's a really good point, you know, because I've been making videos doing this for maybe a decade now in marketing. And I I do remember obviously we get the same questions and we deal with hundreds of clients, you know, weekly. And understandably, you want to answer the same questions. But every so often, you start to see the changing in the answers very slightly, depending on on what the topic is. You know, um, I, when I first came over here back in 06, my sister was traveling with me before she went to university. She stayed and nearly lived for a year as well in the country. And we were in Monteverde. We were in the cloud forest. So we were very isolated. And this is before the road was paved, you know, so you really felt like you're out in the sticks. There's two buses a day that take you to the city and you can't get out easily, right? Um, and I and I'm trying to encourage her to come back, you know, because she went back to study university and has since had a kid and got married. And I'm like, you you have to come back and see the side of Costa Rica that I now see from, in my case, the metropolitan area based in San Jose. But yeah, traveling, the people, the infrastructure, um, and it is crazy because you, you it's finding that balance between that um, uh, being being very developed driving uh, tourism as well as other industries that are being now successful here right and have still have maintaining the culture and the essence of what exactly. is Pura Vida and, and Costa Rica which you can see a lot like you say where you are uh, in the day-to-day -day. And, and I think you see that in those tourist areas like you mentioned really is a really valid point that the people working at these hotels they're really proud and they, they enjoy what they do and it's not something that they're forced to because they're in the tourism sector it's because that's naturally, uh, you know, who they are as a, as a very warm people. I totally agree. Um, we, we've talked, obviously, about all inclusives and why you should try and mix it up if you can be. What are your top three hotspots that you can't miss if you're coming for the first time? Oh, man. I I mean, I obviously love Arnold <laughs> here in La Fortuna. Sure. Um, I love it here. I think that it's a great time to travel year-round here. Um, and it's funny because I used to be a huge Guanacaste lover. I still love Guanacaste. We have a condo there. Like I said, I go there often, but Manuel Antonio and Uvi are such special areas because of all of the wildlife that they get there. Yeah. Um, that you just don't get in the rest of the country. Is it possible to see monkeys, you know, in the entire country? Yes. Do we see monkeys here or hear them every now and then? Yeah, but we don't. I don't wake up to them on my balcony, right? Or even swinging across trees in front of my house. Um, we're in my Melantonio and Capos area. You you do. And yeah. so I, I always say Guanacaste is great. The all-inclusives are great, right? We have some amazing partners there. Um, and not to take away from them because I'd almost say that they have prettier beaches. Yeah. You can get that in a lot of countries. What you can't always get is that beautiful mix of like where the rainforest meets the ocean with tons of wildlife. And that's what Manuel Antonio has. Um, and so I think that's a great area. There's no all inclusives. They're mostly small boutique, more authentic hotels and experiences um, or accommodations. But I'd say that those are for sure top two. Um, and then I, I'd almost leave the third one like as as it depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, those are my my two preferences, especially if it's your first time coming. Um, but the third really depends, right? Like, are you what kind of experience are you looking for? Are you looking for something more secluded? Do you want something more boutique? Are you looking to be, you know, do you have kids that need to be, you know, on tours and and yeah. um active the whole time? Do you like something, you know, adults only? Are you looking for another beach destination? Do you want something up in the mountains or the cloud forest? Um, what time of the year is it, right? So Should we many, look at the so Caribbean? Questions. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard to say. Um, I, I love when people will ask me, can you give me another option? And I'm <laughs> like, oh yeah, I could give you 400 more options. But what, do, but what are you looking for, right? Yeah. What is it that you are looking to experience? It's. I think it's similar when you go to any country, right? Um, one country doesn't just have one experience. It has so many. And so yeah. you pair them together, kind of like a five course meal. Right. Um, and so I'd say that the third one really depends on what, it, what the traveler is looking for. Who are they traveling with? Are yeah, they celebrating I think, I think something? totally, totally valid. And obviously Arenal adventure capital, you know, Guanacaste, you mentioned it beautiful for the beaches, the larger resorts. 
Um, and then obviously Manuel Antonio is, uh, is 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 great for everything you mentioned. I find it funny that we've been working together for a number of years now. It feels like you've been in this role for a lot longer than you have. Maybe that's because you were in the hotels previously, but I'm, I'm engaged with you. And I, I used to be a travel consultant right before I moved into marketing. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's a question that comes up all the time. But the way you express uh, the rainforest meeting the ocean, it's like, yeah, it's so true. I can I can see why you plan such great vacations. Because I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah, actually, you know, I haven't been back down there. I could go there. Very, very good. <laughs> No, Thanks. fantastic. I, I totally, I totally, I think it, I think it's great. What about the tours? I would love, obviously, we always consider Arenal, the La Fortuna area, the, the the adventure capital of Costa Rica. You know, if you're coming for a week, go to the volcano for three days, maybe before visiting a beach destination for your first experience, right? What are your top three tours in Arenal? I feel like this changes. Well, kind of like you said, I feel like my, you know, every year, every two or three years, I feel like my idea of top changes, right? So I would always say naturally the waterfall repelling. I think it's super special. I think it's not every country that does that and does it safely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I love waterfall repelling, especially, you know, paired with rafting because they're kind of all in the same area, that Canyon area here in like Santa Clara, which is about 40 minutes outside of Fortuna. Um, but recently I love, 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 love the sloth territory hike with the campesino tour. Um, so the campesino tour is a local traditional uh, family. You, you go there. And again, I, I, I combine it with the sloth territory hike cause they're pretty close. Yeah. Um, and you go hang out with a local family. They don't speak English. They have their local farm. They show you their report, their tree reforestation project. They have their, um, kind of the azúcar farm so they you know they they have kind of have like some agriculture they grow coffee and chai and, and cacao so you make chocolate with them you know you you make yeah. the sugar cane juice um they have like a medicinal garden of course you have a guide there who is explaining all this to yeah. you because they don't speak english yeah. um, but it's a private tour and then at the very end you you cook lunch with them and for me every year that goes by i feel like it's harder and harder to find more authentic experiences here in Costa Rica that 100%. aren't super touristy. And that one, I I would say 80% of the time people see it on their itinerary and they're like, eh, that doesn't sound super fun. It is the number one tour of my travelers. They're like, thank you so much for kind yeah. of pushing us to do that because it doesn't sound nearly as um, touching as it feels. I mean, it's so cool to see how they are so self-sufficient, right? I mean, they have all of their, you know, they, they grow a lot of their own, you know, herbs and, and everything that they need to be sustainable. They, they have, and it's just so cool. And they're so going back to being super hospitable and humble. Um, it's a really, really great experience. So those are our two. Um, and then if I had to choose a third, Oh man. I mean, the canopy, the canopy awesome. in La Fortuna zip lining yeah. is so amazing. I mean, to zip line and see Lake Arnall and the volcano. Yeah, the and time. if you're lucky, some wildlife, I mean, yeah. it's, it's super cool. If you're looking to be adventurous, right. I mean, those are yeah. that one and, and repelling are great. And, and obviously, if you know, like if you're not, the hot springs don't necessarily need to be their own tour because you're probably on site at a hotel with thermal access to, you know, beautiful hot spring water. That's an amazing answer. And as, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, one of the reasons is, again, it comes back to the people. It's a cultural tour that you can't do in every country because it's something that really signifies Costa Rica. You can find zip lining in other places, right? But it's famous here. You can find ATVs, horseback riding, uh, even whitewater rafting, as great as the rivers are. But these are the kind of things that connects you to the people that make it so special. And I think that's probably the reason that our clients or you know your guests have that experience for their families, for themselves. When we we used to send a lot of surveys back, and how was your 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 experience for your vacation? You, you know your hotels, your tours, and your transfers. And more often than not, the highlights were the drivers even between the destinations because they were so in, so informal, so friendly. They had such a great time, you know. And I always found that fascinating. And I think that goes a lot to what you were saying about the uh, uh, about the Campesino tour, which is a great one. Uh, I was gonna I have food. Food is great food. too. They're in La Fortuna. That's true. Yeah. 
it's something that does sometimes get overlooked. You know, Costa Rica is not necessarily famous for the cuisine, the famous rice and beans, you know, duplicated number. But when you're actually making it and you're seeing it made, you mentioned the sugar cane there. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great experience. That's very true. I have a question here before we kind of wrap up, but I think maybe you've answered it, which is, you know, your essential seven days in Costa Rica. But it sounds like Arenal Volcano, maybe three days with some of these tours, and probably Manuel Ovita, Central Pacific, to the beaches and and wildlife. Yeah, I'd say I'd say for sure. You know, I I love the the Manuel Antonio area. I'd say like July through October. I love the Viejo, that Caribbean side. It never gets side. talked about. Yeah, those beaches, the snorkeling, and I was just there last week or two weeks ago. I saw like three sloths. We saw tons and tons of scarlet macaws. Uh, we saw monkeys, way more than you would see in Guanacaste. So I've actually been been recommending it a lot. And it's interesting because my travelers are like, oh, I haven't really read about this place. Are you sure? Um, and that's what makes it so beautiful too, yeah. right? Is it's like, it kind of feels like still off the beaten path. It's still, it's not super um, developed. Yeah. The food is delicious. The rice and beans, you know, the Caribbean rice and beans, they're oh, so good. A lot of the hotels that we work with include snorkel gear. So I would say actually, you know, for a beach destination, if we're going to pair it with Arnold, um, they even have those great domestic flights from Limon to San Jose. Uh-huh. So it even for like the first part of the trip and then ending in, in La Fortuna is great. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Man- Manuel Antonio. And I think it depends, right? If they're if it's a repeat traveler yeah. that's looking for a different experience, but also, you know, something that there, there's a reason that they came back. And so figuring yes. out what it is that they loved and um maybe maybe making some other suggestions. But no, those that's are some a, top ones. That's sure. a great one. That's a really good point that it is such an amazing location. It still isn't anywhere near developed as the Pacific Coast. And people forget that we have that Caribbean coast. And like you say, because it doesn't get as much attention as the Pacific side, um, it is one of those things that you probably might, maybe you haven't read as much. And you mentioned July through like October, November, more sunshine on the Caribbean side of that time of year. So that's a, that's a wonderful pairing. Jess, my final question before we wrap up, are you here in Costa Rica for the long run? Oh, yeah. Building a house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. I, I keep adding up how much I've already spent. I'm like, yeah, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not going anywhere else anytime <laughs> soon. Um, you know, I, I love it. And I do feel it's funny whenever my mom comes and she stays with us, she's like, oh, let's go to Rio Celeste or, you know, some of the places that she hasn't been to. And yeah. I'm like, she's like, oh, let me guess. Three to four hours. I'm like, yeah, mom, you can get anywhere. I can streak up in my house in three to four hours. And she's like, ah, oh. I'm like, or Fortuna. Fortuna is just 40 minutes. Um, but I feel super grateful to to live where I do. I mean, we're relatively, we're kind of smack dab in the middle from, you know, each coast. Um, yeah. We've got tons of culture, but also convenience close by, right? Like there's a Walmart here, which <laughs> exactly. I never thought living in the States yeah. that I would be so excited to live near a Walmart. But we we do, we have, you know, as many conveniences as we need. Um, and I, I love it. So definitely here for the long run. And um, we we love to support local Costa Rica hotels, tours, restaurants yeah. as much as we can. Yeah. So um, yeah, Wonderful. I'm here for a while. Fantastic. Well, Jess, it has been an absolute pleasure. Every minute chatting with you, uh, a wealth of information. As ever, I'm going to leave your contact information if those are watching on YouTube underneath so you can reach out to Jess directly. And of course, if you're listening on the on any uh, anywhere you get your podcast, you'll be able to to reach out to Jess and have, probably plan an amazing Costa Rican experience. And hey, maybe like you even want to come down and live uh, live down here because hey, it sounds like you're having a wonderful time. Yes. Thank you so much for having me and super happy to help out. No worries. I look forward to having you on the show in the near future to discuss your build. Good luck. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Whatever you got. That was a fascinating chat with Jess. Uh, She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to travel here in Costa Rica. Uh, I certainly learned a few things and it was really good to get her her insights on the best places to go, where to visit, when to visit. And some of the tours that she mentioned as well are fantastic. If you're interested in reaching out to Jess directly, uh, double check the description box uh, for this podcast. You'll find all of her information there to reach out and to perhaps plan your next trip to Costa Rica. Or if you're coming back, get in touch as well. And if you have any questions for us in general and you're watching on YouTube, please let us know in the description and comments box below and I'll get straight back to you. As ever, please don't forget to subscribe to wherever you get your podcasts. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week on another Costa Rica travel and living podcast.
podcast. From me, Adam Baker, Asta the Parson.